hello everyone, Rick Palaya, leading the customer organization here at SmartSuite. And always a joy to, to share time with Richard and to hear what he's working on. I'm going to learn something new today. I'm sure of it. I always do. And Richard and I haven't met now for a few days, which means in his world, that's been a ton of building. So excited to see what that looks like. We're going to try something a, a little different here because Richard can do an hour session on any one of the solutions he's put together without a doubt. And we're going to queue up here a poll. So for these early joiners here, we're going to try to understand, Emma, I think I can kick this off. If not, feel free to do it on your side. We're going to give everyone a chance to, here we go, launching the poll. Brilliant. So the poll that. that just popped up. We are curious to know which workflows you are most interested in. You can choose multiple. As these come through, we'll use this just simply to prioritize the time that Richard spends today. We'll try to touch on as many of these as possible, but please chime in, let us know what your thoughts are, and we will get rolling. Look at that. The polls are coming in already. That's fun. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So I see a lot of interest in the project-based task templates. That's fun. That's actually what I was working on before we got on here. So just out of curiosity, Rick, which one of these is are you most interested in? Most of the conversations we have on a weekly basis would revolve around this project-based task templating. Super relevant. However, AI being as pertinent as it is, and your use of AI and being taking it from a toy to an actual usable piece of the business, I'm super interested in that. But I could share time with you on every one of these, really. Yeah, they're super fun. So it looks like 66% of people have voted. How many of them will we let them vote before we before we go with yeah. one? Let's the, the numbers will keep piling up here as, as it did for the last session. Early joiners advantage. So let's go ahead and I won't end the poll, but I will, I don't know if there's a way that I can eliminate this. I think the tribe has spoken here. Project-based test templates. Let's start there. Test templating is a close second, tangential to that. And then we can get into some of the AI powered stuff. We'll see what we can cover today, Richard. So the okay, floor so is yours. Pro Project-based task templating is is really interesting because we have we have a lot of different types of projects we do with our company. For those of you who weren't on the last webinar, I'll do just a, a real brief what our company does. So you can that, that gives you context for how we're building our projects and how you might translate those into your types of projects. I run a company called Push Button Podcasts. And what we do is we help businesses take their their weekly video podcast and turn it into all of their content creation um, for their business. So our team is going to do things like the video editing, they're going to do the audio editing, they're going to do the written assets, so all the stuff that gets written for social media and the other things. We're going to create uh, derivative content, so like the stuff that you see on YouTube Shorts or TikTok for their podcast. And so that's the stuff that's going to happen on a weekly basis. And all of that's going to be in that task templating one where we're going to have a dynamic task list based on what's happening every week. And the other side is that we bring on new clients regularly. And when we bring on a new client, we have the onboarding project. And so the onboarding project is significantly more in depth and less streamlined than than like the task that we do for every client on every show every week. So that's where we use the, the project-based templating structure is when we do our onboarding because we have a complex set of things we do over six weeks for a new show. And so that's going to be things like we have several booked meetings that we need to do with the client and there's different people who are associated with those meetings. We're going to do uh, video graphic creation. We're going to do written asset creation for the show. We got to set up lots of different pieces of their social media platform. And so each one of those tasks is relatively complex and needs access to all of the features of a whole record. I'm getting at there is our project, the project based one is going to be very useful when you have each task on a project needs to have the full record capabilities of Smart Suite. And the task templating one is going to be more useful when you're talking about like a checklist of, hey, this episode this week needs to have these five things done. And there's not a lot of detail that needs to go into it. So does that delineation make sense on when you might use the task templating versus project templating? It does indeed. Yeah. And folks, uh, feel free to chime in the reaction button at the bottom, my favorite part of Zoom, uh, where you see the little smiley face and the plus icon. They light up those reactions just to let Richard know we're in, we're in lockstep with him. Perfect. Thank you. Sweet. I'm going to share my screen here a little quick, and I'm going to get into our podcast launch section and show you what it looks like and some of the views that we've built. And then I'll show you how we are essentially 
using the automation structure inside of Smart Suite to build ourselves task templates. And you'll have to excuse just like every all this other stuff I'm we're actively building in here. So all of this stuff is not complete, right? It is like 70, 80% at best, and will probably always be 70, 80% because we're always working on improving it and making it better. So you'll see a bunch of stuff that's like SOPs go here because they haven't been written yet, <laughs> but they're so things like that. So let me get into the screen share, share screen options. I got multiple share screen options. This will stop sharing the other person's screen. Do you mind if I take over the screen share? Take it away. All yours. There we go. So we go like that and share. And let's go to podcast launch. We have, I mentioned before, we have our shows at the top that are all of the shows that we're currently working with on a regular basis. Then we have all the episodes. That's our episode table. That is every episode for every show that we are working on every week. And then we have our podcasts that are currently in launch mode. And launch mode is each one of the shows has a has its own project template. So if I click here, active onboarding, We'll see all of these these projects are all actively being worked on. I'm going to give a shout out to one of my one of my clients here because I know she's very excited about this podcast and getting it launched. It's called Learning to Listen to Palestine. And she's telling the stories of Palestinians. And it's a really interesting podcast that she's working on over there that I think is going to be really beneficial. But what this is doing is we have a view for every for every client. And the main table right? The, the main database is just a huge list of all the tasks that are associated. It's not particularly useful to see all of the tasks in a project base like this. So our views are really where most of the, the power is of doing a project-based templating. And so we have a view for each one of our clients and we're using the filter structures up here to do all of this. And it's all based on using the, the linked record. So we're using a linked record for our the the client that it's the project goes with. And this one's advertising in America, classroom to courtroom, exceptional business podcasts, all the linked shows allow us to do these views. Does that make sense or how we're creating the views based on a linked record? If we get into one of these, our our the other thing that we do with this view is it's a, a view that's consistent. So we've made one view and then we just duplicate this view each time and change the we change the one filter so that when our project managers come in, you'll see each one of these looks exactly the same. So the same the same columns and the same filter and the same grouping, because if you don't make them all consistent and your project manager is going back and forth between all your views and they're all a little bit different for a project thing like this, that'll drive people nuts. We have we just use one, one of the views that's currently active. Anytime a new client comes on, we duplicate that view and change the filter. And then the other thing that's important to it is locking the views. So using the lock view functionality, because when you have a project on here, if someone changes the filter on what they're looking at or changes the grouping, the view falls apart and the project, it doesn't, it, it's not a project anymore. So in order for the view to be a project, you need to set your filters correctly for whatever that project is and then lock the view so that the uh, view can represent the project. Does that make sense so far? That is just some of the setup of how we get this to work is that is that you have your views are your projects and we're linking we're linking and using a linked record to create our filters. So that's that's the first sort of step is the views. And then the second couple of things that we're doing here, we're making use of the folder structure. You saw that where we have our active shows. These are our projects that are onboarding. And then when they're done onboarding, we're moving the view just from one folder to the other so that it's just out of the list, right? Because as we as we, on, we went on board about four shows a month and they take anywhere from four to six weeks. So there can be up to eight shows on our active onboarding. But if we had the last six months worth of shows on here, this folder becomes overwhelming for our staff. So when a show is done onboarding, we just move the view into completed onboarding. We do not delete it. And the reason we don't delete it is because we don't delete all the project tasks. We want to have the history and the comments and all the other things. If we need to go back to something, we want to keep, keep, keep the projects there. So we have a completed onboarding folder for that. And so that is just the basic structure of our project system. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. And then uh, let's get into the magic of how it actually works, because this is all this is actually one of the simplest templating things we're doing in, in SmartSuite, because it's all using built in automations. We don't need to go and touch Zapier or Nate or anything like that. It's all built with the, uh, the systems that are here. So First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to active onboarding and we're going to create a, we're going to duplicate a view and we're going to call this the test show and testy Mick Testerson show, something like that. 
And we're just going to create a new show here and adjust our filters. And I already set this up to show it off. We've got the Testy McTesterson show, and we're going to uncheck the filter for Family Captain. And we have a whole set of tasks in here. And on my only problem here is I created all these ahead of time. So I'm going to delete all of these so you can actually see it happen live. So we're going to delete this set of tasks. Normally, when you duplicate the view, it's not going to come with tasks, but <laughs> I created those tasks earlier. So we have a blank view and we have a show record that is filtering down on all these, the Testy McTesterson show. That's one of our test clients from our main show table. We created that record over there. That happened before we got on here. But so create a record for a client that the, so, that the project's going to be associated with. And now we have this third folder here where we have our tasks to duplicate and our duplicated tasks that need to be have a show assignment. And that's where it's going to move the task into our stuff. So this is our tasks to duplicate. And I have broken something, probably all of those duplicated tasks that I just deleted, I need to undo. Here's a useful feature. If you ever delete something that you didn't want to delete, there's a recycle bin. And I'm going to restore all of those that I just deleted and just change my record because I broke things before we, before we got on the call. And while we're here, I'm restoring these. Feature request for the product team. I would love to be able to multi-select or restore. Yeah, fair. Let me give it one second to put these back and change my title on them. Nice thing about the this restore thing is it tells you when you deleted them and who did the deleting. So you can filter all of that down and find something very specific if you have, happen to do what I just did and deleted all the things you didn't mean to delete. There, you got an extra feature. So let me select all of those. What I meant to do was remove this link show record. Come on. I have busted something linked show record that is required but i have to take it off for okay so we have our tasks to duplicate and i remember why i was causing this problem so this is our tasks to duplicate our whole list of tasks and the way that this is set up is each one of these these records is essentially the stuff that we have to do in onboarding. And so I've got them we've got them grouped into I don't know what you would call these different areas of our onboarding. So the record we call this media, M E D I A, right? It's manage client setup, engineer show assets, deploy publishing locations, initiate the first episode, air the first episode. So we have our whole set of tasks and then each task in here has all the details that are needed for the task. So we have ensure the show record is filled out, what stage it's in, the status for it, the due date for it, and then a checklist. And then we are we haven't written all the SOPs yet, but each task has the SOP that goes along with the record. And so what it's going to do then, and we'll get it, the time formulas are not probably relevant for most people. You guys are building out some time, some time things that we are just, we're hacking together some formulas to get time records for things. But the main por portion of the record is this stuff up here. And the most important one is this linked show record. And what it does for us is let us essentially build out whatever tasks we want. So anytime we've, we're actively improving our onboarding process. So every time we make a change to our onboarding process with a particular client, we'll come back into that, into that record and make changes to the tasks to duplicate. So as an example, the other day on our ops meeting, one of my staff members was like, hey, you keep forgetting to add Nicole to the squad cast thing. And so like we went into the task to duplicate, went to the checklist and just put a little note on there, remember to add Nicole. And so the next client that comes through when the project happens, when we duplicate these tasks, all of those changes are just always there. And so I look at the this list here, this task to duplicate, like a living, breathing document that we're improving this process. in. so anytime we have 
notes, every ops meeting that we get on where we discuss the onboarding project, we always pull up this task to duplicate list and any notes or improvements or SOP changes or anything that happens to this process happens here in this tasks to duplicate list of, okay, this section here on the engineer show assets, we want to change our due date structure. Or we want to change what's on the checklist or we want to change whatever it is. We always have this project of this like task to duplicate where we're working on improving that process. So that's the way we use this list is it's a living, breathing sort of list of making changes and making this process better for our clients. So that's how we we work with the project list. Does that make sense so far? And then, so that's our task to duplicate list. And then what happens is we basically just need to duplicate all these records and change the show, the linked show. So the linked show to whoever our, our client is, right? whatever the, the client record is. And so in order to do that, we just make use of the ability to mass select all of the, the things and duplicate the record. I'm not going to duplicate the record yet because I want you guys to see how it happens. So this task to duplicate and this duplicated tasks that need to be to be added on there. Let me put the test record back on there. Testing McTesters didn't show. So this has got all of our records on it and this one's empty. So we have a full list and we have an empty list. And that's really important. So full list here, this has our our sample client essentially on it. And then this one has the, the same filter is just link show is empty. And that's how those two views are being built. And then we use your automation structure in here to build our podcast launch. And it's very simple. So the trigger is when a record is created on today. So anytime we create a record today, and that's that duplicate function is going to create a whole list of records. It's going to, it's going to take, I think we got 25 records in there. We hit duplicate. Now we have 25 records where the condition created today is satisfied. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the record that was created and clear the value linked show. Does that make sense? So it's a very simple automation. And the only thing that it's doing is when we duplicate this set of tasks, it'll clear out this linked show record, which will give me this view filled up with an area to add in the linked show. So here's what we do. We select the whole thing. We got a new client that comes on. My project manager can come in here, select the whole list of tasks to duplicate. They click duplicate. And now we went from 25 tasks to 50 tasks. The automation structure is gonna start kicking in and you'll start to see this count down from 50 tasks, 49 tasks, 44 tasks. And what they're doing is it's clearing out that linked show record and moving over to this second view. So your automation thing, it'll catch up here in a second, 18, 19, 20, 22. When we get to 25 tasks, the automation's completed, right? So now we have our, our original project is still here. We haven't messed anything up here. And any changes or upgrades we made to the process now exist on this new one. And all we need to do is mass link a show to our new record. And so I want to go in here and I need to filter this. I put the wrong one on there. We have a Tessie McTesterson copy is the one I was trying to add on there and why I confused myself earlier. So this is our new client with a blank show. These are all the tasks that we just duplicated that have a blank show. We click on this in one spot and we do testing McTesterson copy, update. It'll mass update the records. And now our project is ready to go with all of the tasks. So we have a, a completed view. We have the most updated version of our process and we have made a project task template that we can very quickly click a button and the whole project comes across. And that's it. So it's probably one of our simplest sort of setups, but that's that's how that works. So at this point, I don't know you want to have any, any feedback or questions on how that works, because I know I probably talked a little fast and drink from a fire hose. So I'm through yet. The bottom there where we see the Q&A, feel free to comment, of course, but the Q&A down at the bottom, when I see those questions come in, we'll make sure that they're answered along the way. Awesome. Yeah, that's how we manage our project-based tasks. So it's using a lot of the standard features in Smart Suite where we have the views and the ability to do linked records and the potent automation platform to set up. It's just, it's essentially creatively using your automation platform to, to let us build project-based task lists. Love that. There is a comment in here around any ways that you could see of simplifying that. Keith's asking for, is there a way to do this with less steps that you could conceive? So we have not yet figured out how to do it with less steps. So right now it's basically, it's three steps, right? Four. So there's the create the new view. And so you can automatically create the, I don't think, I don't know if you can actually automatically create views yet. So you have to create the view, but like 
we automatically create the show records. So when a new client comes through on our, our, wow, it'll come to me, our checkout system, it automatically creates the show record in SmartSuite. And then it automatically creates a task list for my project manager to be like, hey, a new client came in and here's the three things you need to do, right? Go over to the project launch list and duplicate the view and change the filter to the new show. And then you duplicate the tasks and add in the new link thing. So it literally takes my team less than five minutes to set up a new client because the the show is up there and then they're just duplicating the tasks and changing that one link record. It took me longer to explain it than it did to, than it does for my team to actually do it. So hopefully that makes sense. I think so. Yeah. And there is, I believe there is a way using our API to automatically create views. So I'll get back to you on that one okay. personally, Richard, to see maybe we can take that five minutes down to two or three. We'll say Joseph with a follow-up question. Do you have a plan for managing year over year production? Will you have a separate solution for backups? So right now we have not put enough records onto any of the tables to be worried too much about it. And so I think because we're using a professional account, we can have up to five or 50,000 records on a table. And we only have 25 records per show. We would probably be able to, to put several years worth of production into this one product or podcast launch table before we have to worry about it. But if I needed to, if we were running into that limit of that 50,000 records per table, what I would do with it is take that completed onboarding view and you can just move the, move the views and move the tasks to another solution or to another table and have it called archived or something and make it a, a hidden table. And you could absolutely do that as a year by year thing. Let's take all the clients from this year and just duplicate them over to another table, call it 2024 clients and have an archive of it so that you keep your record count lower. But I haven't, we haven't hit the limits yet. So I, I haven't tried to build a solution for it. Very nice. Amanda's asking if you can show the automation again, please. Yeah, absolutely. So the automation is in our podcast launch one. I should name it. It's just new automation one at this point. So there's two steps when a record is created and the condition is where first created is today. That's the trigger that lets me use the duplicate function as the, as the key. And then the action is on the record that was created with the duplicate, just clear the linked value. And that runs the, runs the pod project based one. Joel is asking, can you add durations and dependencies to the template tasks that can then plug into the initial start date? So all the dependencies and dates get updated automatically. So you can, and I don't have that on our, on this one. So let me show you another automation that does something similar. So in our episode records, we have, we've been toying around with two different ways to run our tasks using the onboarded the onboard checklist options and then using a sub table of tasks and so this is less project based and more checklist based but if you have fields that have due dates and stuff you'll notice these all have due dates with offsets so similar style automation you'd have to run it a little bit differently but if we go to our subtask assignment automation create a record and so right now it had, we were just clearing the records on the automation. You'd have to build a second automation that was like, Hey, let's update all of these to do whatever you wanted, but you'll see on our due date, we're actually using a, we're using the due date with the math functions that you guys have built in. So our, whenever we run them as, Hey, this due date minus seven days is when this task needs to be done. And due date minus six days is when that task needs to be done and due date minus four days and due date minus two days and this is on the due date. And so we're using the automation structure to to put on our, all the due dates get uh, updated automatically for when we create the, the subtasks on here. Yeah. And so we're not using that on the project thing, but we could. So if the show record was like, the show record would need to have a, if they came in on June 20th and we want to be done in four weeks, right? So August 20th might be like a project completion due date that when we created did the duplicate tasks, we could run the uh, automation and be like, hey, due date is this linked record that it came from, update the, the due dates and have it cascade all the way through. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't have a, a demo of that because I'm not doing it on our project-based things, but you could. Yeah. Nice. I think it did. It, it, it explained it well. Uh, Mirai is asking related to that, do you have an automation to back up things in case, in case SmartSuite ever went down, for example? We don't currently. 
we probably should at some point, but the all of the show records, like everything you have on your records, you can export. So let me click on something here. You can click on it and you can export as a CSV or Google Sheet or something like that. And then the nice thing too is they also import back in nicely as CSVs and exports. So if you were really worried about it, I don't know if you can automate exports because I haven't played around with the API enough to see if you can automate exports. Then you could you could have someone on your staff be like, hey, once a month, just go into the, the episodes table and export a backup. And I might do something like Google Sheets because we use Google Workspace a lot. And we have all of our clients have a, they all have a project folder inside of our Google Documents thing. And so we could just export their list and stick it in, you know, at the end of the month or something like that into Google Drive. We're not currently doing that. You could. Hmm. There are backup solutions out there too. Mariah, feel free to, to be in touch and we can suggest a few to look at. Excellent. All right. Let's see. You put the pedal down again here, Richard. <laughs> awesome. So our other one was the task templating on, on the actual task record, right? Was the, that was the second most popular? It was. So, yeah. yeah, that was the second most popular was task templating. So let me go over to our task list and show you. So one of these is super complicated. And then the other one is very simple. And it has to do with how you might want to use things and what is going on. So let me go into our episodes record and show you two different ways you can do um, task templating. So I'll pop open this record here and show you what we were working on before. So we got our episode tasks and data, and we have two different options. So we have our episode tasks, which is just using a simplified checklist, right? Where And the nice thing about the checklists are they can, they're interactable right on the record. And it has the due date right on the record and it has the assignment right on the record. And you can, because there, you guys have full HTML capabilities in there or what do you call them? It's not HTML, it's rich text. That's what I'm looking for. You can put links to SOPs directly on the record. So there's a lot of benefits to having just a simplified task list here. And so if you want to do this and use checklist templates, this is of course the simpler way to build a record but it is more complex to build the automations. So you have the have that section there. Now, the benefit, again, of course, is simple record, simple checklist. The detriments are with these, you cannot filter your views based on assignment or due dates of the checklist items. So at this point, they, and Rick, I'm not sure if you're allowed to say or not, are there any future plans for allowing the filtering by checklist items? I'll let, I think we've got a few of our product folks in here. I'll let them chime on that. I know it's something that's been requested. So it's certainly on okay. the roadmap. Yeah. I can't so speak to if there, if there is, if there were filtering methods for this, you wouldn't need the subtask thing, but you guys also have a very robust subtask ability because of the way you guys do linked records and, and the, what am I looking for? The linked records and the ability to have a hidden table. And so if you have hidden tables, you can run the same sort of task list as subtasks. So the, uh, the benefits here are you get the ability to set up specific views that you can filter based on on who what's assigned to who and what the due dates are and and where they're at the detriment of course is that you no longer have a simple record when you have a more complex database structure because you have to make sure that records are linked and a few other things are there and in order for someone to complete this task rather than just checking the box here they have to click it open and click it over here to change it. So it's like a three-click operation instead of a one-click operation to change the status. So it's a little bit more complex structure, but you have a lot more flexibility with your views. So does that make sense, a delineation for like why you might use one versus the other for, for task templating? Let me show you real quick on the episode of subtasks some of the ways we're using the, the views here so you can see which way you might want to go with it. And then we'll get into how you build the automations. So if we go into the episodes, one of our hidden tables, we have this episode subtask. And this is just the main database table that has a list of all of our subtasks. I just built this morning to show you guys the difference um, of one versus the other, because we're currently using the chat, the, the checklists on there, but I wanted to show both options here. So I built this morning to show you guys. So that's why there's only two shows worth of tasks. We have all the subtasks and it's using again, that linked record. And the linked record here is just the episode that it's associated with. And then we've done a couple of things, a couple of view things, right? We've got, these are things that are like our project managers might be interested in. We want to see all the tasks that are assigned to our writers or all the tasks that are assigned to our file managers or tasks that are due today, right? So they could look at, okay, where's our team at? The ops manager or the show manager could look at all of the shows that are have tasks due today, or we could see all the stuff that is overdue. And we could look at that and communicate on how the tasks are going for that. So this is your main benefit of using the subtask ability. 
would be to have filterable views. So you could have an overview of like how the individual checklist items on a set of tasks are, is that ability to do the views. Now you'd have to do a couple of things on, because these views are going to exist on the subtask view and not on your main table. They're not going to exist up here that I'm aware of. You'd have to decide if you want that table to be hidden and just available to your, like your project manager, whoever might be interested in those views, or if you want your team to see the views up on your main navigation list, that would just be a decision for, you know, however your organization is structured. We've chosen to hide that table and then make it just available to our project management team because the actual individual users that have the checklists items assigned to them don't really care about the overview list. They're just going to use the my work view and see the stuff in there. Hopefully that makes sense. But with that, let's get into the automation structure. And so the automation structure, there are two ways that you can handle that. Well, I'll go over the simpler one first. And the simpler one is for the subtask view. So the subtask version of this is almost exactly the same as what we were doing with the project templates. We are just building the task list inside of the automation. And so the way that we're doing that, we got a couple of things going on. We have our lookup fields and automations. And in the lookup fields that we have down here, I've got several lookup fields that are pulling in all the assignments from the show, right? So the show has a post-production person assigned. It's got a writer assigned. It's got a file manager assigned. It's got a graphic designer assigned. I just created these two this morning. So they would I would have them for the automation. And for whatever reason, it takes a bit of time when you make a new lookup field for the data to populate. So if you do create new lookup fields, just know it might take a little bit of time, especially a lot of records before all the updates, for all the records to update with whatever their lookup field data is. So that's why those are still blank because I just created them. So we have those lookup fields, which we're going to use in the automation. And then a couple other things that are important on the record is it's going to have a due date that the uh, show is due by. And that's basically it as far as what we need for the automation to work. And then I think we have one other thing. So if we come into our show manager actions, we have a select task list assignment. And so we got a couple of different options, right? Standard processing speed, expedited processing speed. You can make as many different like lists as you wanted. We're using this list as a way to key off the automation. And so one of the triggers you can have inside of the automation is when a record is updated um, to trigger the automation. And so we're using the when the record basically goes from not having a task assignment list assigned to being assigned standard processing speed, then run this automation. And so when a new episode comes in and the project manager has looked at it, they can select which processing speed needs to happen for it or whatever other, you could have a whole host of different options of like checklists that you wanted to add on there. Um, and then we just build them in the automation. So I just built one right now. Um, and the automation is here. And you'll see our trigger is using that one that we just, I, that field I just showed you. So when the select task assignment list field changes from any to standard processing speed, then we're going to do is we're going to create these sub records in the episode subtasks table. And so it's pretty simple. Each one of these just has the solution, the table, so episode subtasks. And the important piece is the linked record. So the linked record field is what's going to associate it back to that episode or back to the, the parent task, essentially. So you want to have the parent task thing. And it's generally the, the title of the record, right? We renamed it episode identifier, but it's whatever the record title is, will let you associate the records and make sure that they're automatically linked in the automation. And then the rest of the stuff is just using our lookup fields. So it's assigned to the show manager. It's the due date minus whatever our offsets are, status is to do, and the description, we just put the SOPs in. And so you can see that these just change, right? So file management tasks, written asset tasks, graphic design tasks, post-production and scheduling tasks, and our post-schedule review tasks. And the only thing that's changing on them is our due date offset and the SOP that's associated with it and the assignment that's associated with it. And when I'm done with all of this, if I had multiple task lists that I wanted to have, I told, we have an expedited speed, like when we need to get something done faster, uh, we just duplicate the automation and change our due date offsets. Or if you have a separate task list, you could duplicate the automation and change just like, hey, task list A or task list B, and you could change the tasks that are created with it. And that's the, it's the simpler way to build and you get a little bit more flexibility in the views, but you lose some of the, the simplicity on the record because you're going to have, you're going to have the whole subtask sort of situation set up on that. So that's the first way to do that. Does that all make sense? Any questions on that before I show the complex one, which is 
significantly more complex, but still very useful. <laughs> Let's see it and I'll bring it on. Yeah. Okay. So let's go for the, if you want to use the other option, right? So the other option is you want to have checklists that are, that are managed. This is going to require an outside automation platform because it's a little bit more complex to do that. So we're using Natan to do this. Natan is, it's their, your other main platforms that you might be able to do this on would be Zapier, Make. Any of them would work, anything that integrates with ClickUp and their beautiful, wonderful API thing. And a little bit of ChatGPT to make all this all this come together because, you know, I didn't write any of the code to make any of this happen. ChatGPT did it all. I'm just going to show you the end result of it. So the setup for it is a couple of things. So you'll notice we have these tasks and they say SMT, FMT, SQT, GTT, PPT. These are little codes that we're associating with associating with a specific set of tasks. So SMT is show management tasks. FMT is file management tasks. SQT is our written tasks. Stands for Scribbler Squad on our team. They call themselves the Scribbler Squad. GDT is graphic design. PPT is post-production tasks. And SMT is schedule or show manager tasks. And so those codes are being used in ChatGPT, or not in ChatGPT, in the automation platform to create the match table. And a match table is just saying, hey, this SMT thing gets associated with the show manager and FMT gets associated with the file manager and SQT gets associated with the writer and GDT gets associated with the graphic designer and so on and so forth. So we're using those little codes and the codes mostly just because it's easier than trying to make sure we spell complete file management tasks the same way and the code all the time. So it's just a simpler way to, to match them together in the code on the automation platform. So there's that. And the way that we're building this is we have a task control list. That's another hidden table. And same kind of thing. We pop open this task control list and it has our checklist. And so our checklist here, this is our master checklist that has the code, it has the title of the task and it has our SOP associated with it. What it doesn't have is a due date or an assignment because those are the things that we want to dynamically assign with the automation. Um, and we got a couple other things going on. We have fields that have all of our offsets, the due date offsets. And so the SMT task has the seven day, a seven day due date offset and the FMT tasks have a six day due date offset. So we can come in and control our offsets on the speed and that's our setup, right? So we have multiple lists here. We could have as many of them as we wanted, but it doesn't really matter. We can, because the uh, automation will pick up whichever ones we tell it to pick up. And so that's our couple of lists there. And the most important bit is this record ID field. And so the record ID field is one of your standard display fields. You can just grab record ID and stick it on your on your list. And I believe we used the, if you go to the modified field settings, the record ID is one of your standard fields that you can add to a record. You can just show the record ID. So the record ID is needed. And what we're doing with it is a couple of things. I know this is where we're getting into advanced stuff. So I apologize if this, this is going to be a little bit confusing, but we're going to go over to our show record or sorry, episode record, and those show manager actions, you'll notice we have our standard processing speed and our expedited processing speed are in here. And we are leveraging, this is just pulling across those two, those two lists. Let me see if I can get in and show them to you. So standard processing speed, we got the values turned on so we can find all of those. We turned on the description. So it's like, hey, seven-day processing speed, four-day processing speed. And when they select it and save the record, we have a button. And the button basically says, save the record first. And this button will create the subtasks for the team and add the due dates and all the required fields to it. If someone selects the standard processing speed, click send to Nathan, it'll add this checklist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and create a test record and just show that to you. Test record. Can't spell while we're going live. Test record. And let me pop it open. And we're going to do a couple of things. So we're going to go to our show manager info and we're going to give this an episode number 500. And we're going to give it a, a link to the hero show which is my personal podcast. And we're going to put in a due date of, let's say, the 30th. 
and we're going to put a publish date of say July 4th because it's a holiday and we like that. Episode status is new episode from client. We'll just make all of that and we'll set the show manager to me because I don't want to freak out my show, my actual show manager on there. So we have all the stuff set up. And if we look on our show manager actions, it'll tell you task assignment list is empty and it'll say required fields. The show primary contact, episode number, due date, publish date. Those are all the required fields in order for the automation to work. So we'll go ahead and save this. And now I just need to search for it so I can find it again. Probably filtered it off into the test record. There we go. Usually it highlights it for me. Let's try this again. There it is. So we got our test record and show manager actions, select standard processing speed, send data to Nathan. And it'll say magic assignment bot activated. You can close this tab. And if we come back in a few seconds, it will create all of our episode tasks. And I say all of that because we're trying to do this live. I probably fucked it up, but. I'm sorry, I'm probably not supposed to say, I forgot to save the record. See, they're over there paying attention. Got to save the record first. Save the record. <laughs> save the record first and then try it again. Show manager actions. Send data to Nathan. And then it comes back very quickly with all of the uh, all of the tasks associated and show manager, that was me. We assigned it to him with the due dates offset in three days, four days. So all the stuff, it just happened real quick from Nathan, put all that through. So very quickly, and just while I'm on here, I'm going to mark these off for my staff members so they don't so they don't see them on their to-do list, but created the, created the tasks. So with that, shows you that it works. Let me show you how we built it. So the automation is over here and we have assign all the tasks on episode in smart suite. And it's a very simple workflow. And I know we showed this workflow before in the first, the first thing we did. And essentially we're using the web hooks feature inside of smart suite to build these, to build those action buttons. And so the action button is a formula and it's passing on a couple bits of data. It's passing on the show record ID and it's passing on the episode record ID. That's all that it's passing using the using the buttons and the formulas. And inside of Nathan, we're using that webhook and we've got two workflows. We have this task assignment bot and we have our standard bot that grabs all of the data. And so if we open this, this workflow, let me go back over to the home and show you the subtask. Let's see if I can find it. Get episode show and contact details from Smart Suite. We use this on every one of our automations. It's the first step. And all it does is it takes the show record ID and the episode record ID, and it grabs all the data from the API and pulls it back in and merges it as a bit of data to pass into whatever workflow we're, we're using. So it's a simple automation that's just basically using the API to say, hey, here's the table, grab that record ID that was passed, um, grab the episode record ID that was passed, and return all of the data, everything that comes back from the record. We get all of it and we can use it in our automation to whatever we want to do. So we grabbed all the data. That's what this sub workflow is. Um, and then we just have a simple little switch that's looking at the, what do you call it? Standard processing speed versus expedited processing speed. And the way that's working is you'll see it says the, this is the record, the record ID that comes from the smart suite automation or sorry, not automation. What is the word called the API? So you can look at the API solution and it'll show you your records. So if we go to episode task control list and we look at the checklist ID, all the IDs come over. You can see all the little IDs for every item that's on there. And it's just saying, hey, whenever this one is equal to the YXBBG, and that's coming directly from, let me go to episodes and see if I can find the 
assignment thing because it just shows you the data right in the uh, the thing. That's one of the reasons why we can do all of this is because the API stuff is really good and it just shows you your actual live data. So let me go and just do a search for assignment. S-A-I-G-N, assignment, select assignment list. There it is. So it shows you YXVBG standard processing speed. Um, so it's giving you the value that it's going to pass via the API because it, it doesn't pass the text. It passes whatever these codes are. I'm not sure why it does that. It doesn't really matter um, because the API thing tells me what it is. So task assignment list, when it's set to standard processing speed, it's going to pass this information. When it's passed as expedited process, it's going to pass this information. And so we're just using that as our filter, right? So if it's equal to this, um, run this branch. When it's equal to this, run the other branch. And then it has our, our task list, right? So we have the task ID. And so the task ID is saying, hey, if it's standard processing speed, we're going to use that record ID. So there's the record ID that we're going to pull. And then basically comes in here and we grab that episode task list. So the episode task list is basically saying, hey, will you go into Smart Suite and get that particular record ID. And the record that it's getting is it's getting this record ID right here, right? The episode standards processing speed, and it's gonna grab all the information off of this record. So it's gonna grab the checklists, it's gonna grab the SOPs data, it's gonna grab the offsets, it's gonna grab whatever else we tell it to grab. Um, and that's what it's doing here. And it'll return all of that data and puts it all together for us over here. Um, and then we have a little bit of code that ChatGPT wrote. And so ChatGPT, I can give you guys copies of any of this code if you want. I'm not sure how you guys might pass that around, but you can certainly, there's nothing proprietary about this code. ChatGPT wrote it in two seconds. And I was like, hey, here's the data we have and here's what I want it to do. So it's got a match table and it says if SMT is the, the thing, then grab, here's the field ID and grab the assignment to field. And then it does a bunch of stuff with it. I don't read enough code to tell you what this does, but essentially the code is taking the match table and it's taking the ID and the other fields and it's matching it all together. And then it essentially it's rewriting the task using using the exact structure that Smart Suite needs in order to write a track task checklist. And it sets all the all the right fields for it. And then when it's all done, it updates the task and it sends it over to Smart Suite. And you can see this is the actual API call. And it's hey, here's the this is the ID of that checklist field on the record. And then it's just inputting the the checklist data. And I wish I could tell you what the code was doing, but I honestly don't read enough code to know how this works. It's just ChatGPT did what I wanted it to do. And it went back and forth a few times. And I was like, hey, we've got all this data. Here's what I want it to do. And I just gave it copies of the API documentation. And I gave it copies of you guys have a help document on how to format an API call for the task checklist. And I gave it that. And I was like, We've got the data because we pulled the record in from here where we pulled in the get episode task checklist. I was like, so here's the output of that. And here's the the format that it needs to be in. And here's all the data. Write the code for me. And it, so it wrote the code for me. That's what's in there. And then again, it wrote the little thing to update the task checklist. And I said, it's a lot more complicated. Happy to just share this workflow. I believe we can do a, an export of this and you guys can have a copy of it. So you guys can explore it if you guys are using Nate or anything like that. You can do all the same things in Zapier or Make. You'd have to, of course, translate to those different automation platforms if that's the automation platform you're using. It's all standard sort of automation stuff. And then we're using the that automation to build our little button where we can assign the subtasks and create essentially templated versions of these. And then anytime we want to add new checklists, we just come in here, add an option so we can have... I said, we, we our, my ops team is working on three or four different other ones because we have some custom work that needs to get done. It's like, hey, custom thing number one, custom thing number two. We update the task control list and then the automation just automatically picks up whatever the that that list is and passes it in so that they can have templated checklists for us. So like I said more complicated from a setup process, but simpler to use on the actual record when you're using them. So that is that's the second option. And that's it. <laughs> that's it, y'all. That's it. <laughs> Amazing as always. Yeah, the one thing that that stands out to me is I think our button field is wildly underrated and underutilized and your usage, not just for a specific thing, but your broad usage of the button field, it, it always impresses me. So uh, I love yeah, what you're your doing Your button field is my favorite part of Smart Suite. We can do so much because of that, especially because of the UR form, URL formulas. You yeah. can pass data all over the place with it. So 
That's very um, cool. Comment here from Jamie, which is summing up everything happening here. Jamie's saying she's just commenting on how she's loving seeing others using Smart Suite. You know, her mind's all over the place thinking about what she can do with it. We there's intentionally a very high ceiling here, right? We always say low floor, high ceiling. And that ceiling is quite high when you start to push the bounds. Richard, in many ways, is a smart suite astronaut, for lack of a better term, in that he's constantly trying to see how high he can go with it. And I think that's what's exciting about these sessions. Brilliant. All right, we'll leave it to, and for the folks that can't stay on any longer, yes, we do always send out these sessions as soon as they're done buffering and processing. We'll see if we can include some of Richard's magic and links and things that have been referenced here for you all. Thank you for sharing the time with us. 